This is Gina from RN2 Professors with a video for you from my pediatric series on neuromuscular disorders. The review questions in this video will focus on muscular dystrophy. The following review questions are on neuromuscular disorders in pediatrics with a focus on muscular dystrophy. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking and the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers. Here's the first question. The parents of a preschooler diagnosed with muscular dystrophy are asking questions about the course of their child's disease. Which should the nurse tell them? Select all that apply. Number one, muscular dystrophies usually result in progressive weakness. Number two, the weakness that your child is having will probably not increase. Number three, your child will be able to function normally and not need any special accommodations. Number four, the extent of weakness depends on doing daily physical therapy. Number five, your child may have pain in his legs with muscle weakness. To answer this question, you need to understand how muscular dystrophy progresses. Then determine which answer gives the correct information about the progression. All the information in the answer must be true for it to be correct. Watch out for answers that only have partial truths. This is also a select all that applies question. Look at each answer individually and decide if it fits the question. Number one, muscular dystrophies usually result in progressive weakness. This is a true statement. Muscular dystrophy is a progressive degenerative disorder. Number two, the weakness that your child is having will probably not increase. This is not a true statement. Patients will experience progressive weakness over time. Number three, your child will be able to function normally and not need any special accommodations. This is not a true statement. The child will need increased assistance over time and age. Number four, the extent of weakness depends on doing daily physical therapy. This is not a true statement. Daily therapy does decrease contractures, but it will not stop the progression of the disorder. Number five, your child may have pain in his legs with muscle weakness. This is a true statement. Due to the loss of strength and muscle loss, the patient may experience some pain. Numbers one and five are the answers to this question. They are the only true statements about the progression of muscular dystrophy. Here's our next question. Which can elicit the Gower sign? Number one, Close the eyes and touch the nose with alternating index fingers. Number two, hop on one foot and then the other. Number three, bend from the waist to touch the toes. Number four, walk like a duck and rise from a squatting position. To answer this question, you need to know what the Gower sign is testing for and how the test is done. Number one, Close the eyes and touch the nose with alternating index fingers. This sign measures balance and is called the Romberg sign. This test is used for vertigo and intoxication. Number two, hop on one foot and then the other. This test is used to measure balance and coordination. The Gower sign tests muscle weakness. Number three, bend from the waist to touch the toes. This test measures flexibility. The Gower sign tests muscle weakness. Number four, walk like a duck and rise from a squatting position. This is one way to test the Gower sign. Children with muscular dystrophy will have difficulty rising and standing from a squatting position due to the lack of muscle strength. Number four is our answer. Children with muscular dystrophy will display this sign due to muscle weakness. Here's our next question. A five-year-old has been diagnosed with pseudohypertrophic muscular dystrophy. Which nursing intervention would be appropriate? Select all that apply. Number one, discuss with the parents the potential need for respiratory support. Number two, 
Explain that this disease is easily treated with medication. Number three, suggest exercises that will limit the use of muscles and prevent fatigue. Number four, assist the parents in finding a nursing facility for future care. Number five, encourage the parents to contact the school to develop an IEP. This question is asking you to pick the correct interventions to assist the parents of a child with muscular dystrophy. Keep in mind that this is a progressive disease with no cure. This is also a select all that applies question, so remember to look at each answer individually to see if it fits the question. Number one, discuss with the parents the potential need for respiratory support. This is an appropriate intervention. As respiratory muscles become weaker, support will be needed to be provided. This is an appropriate intervention. As respiratory muscles become weaker, support will need to be provided. Number two, explain that this disease is easily treated with medication. This is an incorrect statement. Muscular dystrophy is a progressive disease and medication will not treat it. Number three, suggest exercises that will limit the use of muscles and prevent fatigue. This is an appropriate intervention. Physical therapy will be part of treatment, but will have to be monitored so the patient does not get fatigued. Respiratory support is priority. Number four, assist the parents in finding a nursing facility for future care. This is not an appropriate intervention for this time. Eventually, the parents will have to decide if the child will need nursing facility care or in-home care, but this is not an immediate concern. Number five, encourage the parents to contact the school to develop an IEP. This is an appropriate intervention. The child should go to school and participate in activities as tolerated. Numbers one, three, and five are the answers to this question. They are appropriate interventions to help guide the parents in how to help their child. Here's our next question. The nurse knows that teaching has been successful when the parent of a child with muscle weakness states that the diagnostic test for muscular dystrophy is which of the following? One, electromyogram. Two, nerve conduction velocity. Three, muscle biopsy, four, creatine kinase level. This question is asking for the diagnostic test that confirms the muscular dystrophy diagnosis. You need to know the purpose of each of the tests given to answer the question correctly. Number one, electromyogram. This test is part of the workup for muscular dystrophy, but is not the test that confirms the type of muscle disorder. Number two, nerve conduction velocity. This test is also part of the workup, but it does not confirm the type of muscle disorder. Number three, muscle biopsy. Muscle biopsy is the test used to confirm the type of myopathy the patient has. This looks like it's our answer, but we will review the final option to make sure. Number four, creatine kinase level. This is found in the muscle tissue and would be high in muscle disease. Number three is our answer. It is the test used to confirm muscular dystrophy. Here's our last question. The mother of a child with Duchenne muscular dystrophy asks the nurse who in the family should have genetic screening. Who should the nurse say must be tested? Select all that apply. Number one, mother. Number two, sister, number three, brother, number four, aunts and all female cousins, and number five, uncles and all male cousins. This question requires you to know how muscular dystrophy is inherited. To answer the question, you need to understand what chromosome the disease is carried on and if it is recessive or dominant. The question is also select all that apply so look at each answer individually to determine if it fits the question. Number one, mother. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is inherited as an X-linked recessive trait, meaning the defect is on the X chromosome. Women carry the disease and males are affected. The mother should have genetic testing. Number two, sister. 
She should also have genetic testing since the females carry the disease to determine her risks of having male offspring with this disease. Number three, brother. Only female relatives need to be genetically tested. Number four, aunts and all female cousins. All female relatives should be tested to see if they are carriers of this disease. And number five, uncles and all male cousins. Again, only female relatives need to be genetically tested. Numbers one, two, and four are our answers. Only females need to be genetically tested for this disease. If you like this video, please subscribe for free and click the bell to get notified when new weekly videos are released. Thank you for joining me.